in this topic we will going to discuss about arrays so array is one of the collection type within the julia along with arrays you have other types like tuples you have dictionaries in which you can have the key pair value combination which we will going to discuss in a different video or in a different topic but uh, today is or right now let's go ahead and discuss about arrays so arrays is an ordered collection of values and if you need to create a list of vectors or a list itself you will going to create an array now it can be a single dimension or a list with a single column or if it is a list for multiple columns like 2d arrays or 3d arrays which is like a complex nature we can create it here in julia so let's start with uh, some of the basics and then see some of the operations that you can do with the arrays in julia so first of all i am here in the code mode and for creating first array i will say a1 or i may say array underscore one so a1 is fine because i can write it easily and let's create a numerical array so one two three four five so idea or the requirement is that array has to be surrounded by the brackets right and it has the values separated by comma so it is a numerical array and if i just uh, press shift enter it will say that it is a five element array with the uh, int64 that means it is an integer array of one column so within the one single column you have the arrays or array value like one two three four five so over here you have only one type which is integer what happens if you have multiple types for example 1 comma 2.0 comma 3 comma 4 comma 5 so here i have integer float integer integer and another integer so let's see what will going to happen over here if i press shift enter you will see that it will be converted into a float 64 uh, array type and all the elements will be converted into a float so things which you should keep in mind when you are working in a programming sometimes it may happen you are not getting the output that is required and it may be because of the inherent properties of the array function dictionary list tuples that you are using uh, so be very much aware about uh, the types that that is being used within your arrays or any other collection type so now now let's go ahead and uh, use another array which is string so i will say s1 or string 1 and i will say i love julia so this is a string array which has the three values first is i another value is love and julia and if i press shift enter the output will be i love julia array of string type with one column so very very straightforward we had uh, integer array we have float array we have string array not only this we can even have the inbuilt keywords or functions within an array some sometimes it may happen that for some special requirement you have to loop through the the different types of functions that are available so in such cases so for example i will just say f1 just to have it a function array and i will write print print ln and print styled so if i just press shift enter it will create a three element function array of column one so print print style print ln if let's say the different styles of print you need within one program so instead of writing print print ln print styled you can just reference it with the array within the program and your program will become a pretty much uh, or a very uh, easy to you know uh, write code or understand about what you are doing with this program now let's see another type of array which is for example i already declared a1 a2 let me try a3 and here i will write 1 2.0 and then a string which is julia 
So if I enter this um, 2.0 dot, okay, this is an unnecessary dot which I added and this will be an array of type any that means you have used mix type so it, it contains any value within, the, within this array. So this is another type of array that you can create which is a mix type. Apart from this you can also create arrays using the uh, particular type. So what I mean is type underscore int equals to int64 and within the bracket one two three four five this is like forcing the array to have a specific type so this way it should be fine because anyway the values are integer but if let's say type underscore float and we are saying float 64 within that one two three four five so again you have float type which you are forcing to an array and values are integer so if I enter the output will be a float right similarly you have type underscore string is string which you can force and this is Julia and as you would expect the output will be a string string one and this is the string so this is basically indicating that what sort of output that we are looking if if you want the type specific uh, output uh, and don't want the computer to un to basically um, evaluate on the runtime it's it's advisable that you use int or float or, or string or whatever type that you are using it also reduces the burden on the memory or on the processing of the system as well as you would think that we are clearly indicating what what this array indicates so program doesn't really have to think about uh, what sort of values that this particular uh, array is containing all right so let's move on then you have two dimensional array array underscore 2d and writing them is a bit different like 1 2 3 4 semicolon five six seven eight okay and if i execute it two into four array int 64 with the uh, uh, type two it's a two dimensional array so one two three four five six seven eight is basically your two dimensional array that means you are having two separate rows over here so that's two into four two rows four columns that you have it over here so, so far in the previous examples, you have seen that within single column, you are getting the arrays values. And if you want to create a vector, what you can do is simply say vector underscore one or V1, what we could have written that. We can simply say one, two, three, four, five. And if I press enter, it's an array of one row and five column, generally called vector. So you have values like one, two, three, four, five. However, in a proper array where values are separated by comma, it's the one, two, three, four, five in one single column and five rows or five element type array. You can also create a array of random values. Rand five, five random values is what you need. So these are the five random values. If you need, let's say 10, you can get 10 or if you need let's say 3 you can get 3 values so that's sometimes very useful that you are looking for random values for your experiment you can get it by using the rent variable or the rent function and store it in the random array also if you need along with this that it has one column if you need like multiple columns so array underscore rand equals to or rand 2 equals to rand 3 comma 3 that means three rows three columns three rows three column array this way you can generate values pretty quickly and as you would expect it has array has a lot of different functions that that is that basically requires a different three four hour course just to go through everyone understand applicability of each function and with example and all 
So that's about it. I really recommend that you look for the documentation which I have given in the description about the random arrays. Uh, sorry, the arrays due to a, normally a Julia documentation what I usually give, but you will find arrays over there and look for some of the functions. But I will use uh, different array functions whenever the need will arise within the program. So that's about it and I will meet you in the next video.